In this video, I'll be demonstrating how to use Blender to make this text animation. I'll be using Blender version 2.71. Let's start by creating a new project. So from the File menu, select New, and then click on Reload Startup File. Next, right-click on the cube to make sure that it's selected, and then delete it by pressing X. Now let's add some text. So press Shift-A and select Text. I'll zoom in to see it better. To make the text stand up, we'll rotate it on the x-axis. So press R, then X, then 90, then Enter. To edit the text, press Tab to enter edit mode. Now use the backspace key to delete the text and enter in your own text. This is the text that will come into view first. Now press Tab to return to object mode. Next, let's add some thickness to the text. So click on the Object Data button. I'm going to use an extrude value of 0.1. Now let's bevel the edges by entering a bevel depth value. I'm going to use 0.02. Next, let's add the second word that will appear in our animation. So press Shift D to duplicate the text. The new duplicate text will now follow the mouse. To position it at the same location as the original text, press the right mouse button. Now let's hide the first text while we make changes to the second text. So come up to the outliner and scroll down until you can see both text. This is the first text that we created and this is the second. The text that is currently selected will be highlighted and you can select either one by clicking on it. We want to hide the first text, so click on the button that looks like an eye that's located on the same line. Now click on the second text to select it. Then press Tab to enter edit mode. Now change the text to the second word that you want to appear in the animation. Then press Tab to return to object mode. Now let's turn the visibility of the first text back on. So click the button that looks like an eye to turn it back on. Next, let's set up the camera view. So press 0 on the number pad. This is the view looking through the camera. I'll zoom in a little. Now I'm going to lock the camera to the view. To do that, press N to open the Properties panel and put a check mark next to Lock Camera to View. Then press N again to close the Properties panel. Now I can zoom, pan, and rotate while looking through the camera. To make it easier to get the camera view that I want, I'm going to start out by pressing 1 on the number pad to switch to front view. Now we can snap the camera to this view by pressing Ctrl and Alt and 0 on the number pad all at the same time. This also switches back to camera view so we're now looking through the camera again. Then I'll pan the view until the text is at the center. Then I'll zoom. Typically when I zoom I use the scroll wheel, but for more precision I can also zoom by holding down the Ctrl key and the middle mouse button while I move the mouse. Since the two words are different lengths, we need to move the shorter one to the center. So let's first hide the longer text. So in the outliner, click the button that looks like an eye next to the second text. Now in the 3D window, right-click on the text to select it. Then use the arrow to center it. Next, let's set up the animation for this text, which is the first text that will be displayed in the animation. The current position of the text is where we want the animation to be at frame 40, so set the frame number to 40. Now move your mouse cursor up into the 3D window and press the I key. Then select Location Rotation. Now if I move the time cursor, you can see that there is a yellow line at frame 40, which means that a keyframe has been set for that frame. Now set the frame number to 1. At the beginning of the animation, this text will be rotated and out of camera view. So let's rotate it on the Z axis. So press R, then Z, then 175, then Enter. Next, let's rotate it on the Y axis. So press R, then Y, then 175, then Enter. Now use the arrow and drag it down until it's out of view of the camera. Then press I and select Location, Rotation. Now I'll press Play and you can watch it move into position. This is going to be the position of the text until frame 80. So set the frame number to 80. Now press I and select Location, Rotation. 
Now let's set up the text to rotate and move out of view between frames 80 and 120. So set the frame number to 120. Then press R, then Z, then 175, then Enter. Then use the arrows and drag the text to the center, and then down until it's out of camera view. Then press I and select Location Rotation. The current position of this text is where it will stay until the end of the animation. The animation is going to be 160 frames long, so set the end frame number to 160. Now I'll show you what we have so far. So I'll move the time cursor to frame 1 and then press play. Next, let's set up the animation for the other word. So go up to the outliner and click the button that looks like an I for the second text. This will make it visible. Then click the button that looks like an I for the first text to hide it. Now in the 3D window, right click on the text to select it. The current position of this text is where we want the animation to be at frame 120. So set the frame number to 120. Then press I and select Location Rotation. This text will start moving at frame 80, so set the frame number to 80. Now rotate the text on the Z axis by pressing R, then Z, then 175, then Enter. Then use the arrows and drag the text to the center and then up until it's out of camera view. Then press I and select Location Rotation. This is also the position of the text at the start of the animation, so set the frame number to 1. Then press I and select Location Rotation. Now I'll press play to show you what this looks like. Now I'll make the other word visible, so in the outliner, I'll click the button that looks like an I next to the first text. So now I'll show you what we have so far. So I'll move the time cursor to frame 1 and then press play. Now is a good time to save what I have so far. So from the file menu, I'll select Save As. I'm going to name this streaks.blend. Next, let's set the material for the text. So click on the Material button. Then click New. Now come up here and change this from Blender Render to Cycles Render. Then click the Use Nodes button. Set the surface type to Glossy. If you don't see the Glossy shader, then you may need to scroll to bring it into view. Now click here to set the color. If you want to use the same color that I'm using, then click the hex button and enter 963D00. This will give us an orange color. Next, set the roughness to 0.3. Now let's set the material for the other text, so right click on it to select it. Then click the New button. Set the surface type to glossy, and as before, you may need to scroll to bring it into view. Now click here to change the color. If you want to use the same color that I'm using, then enter a hex value of 0075FF. Next, set the roughness to 0.3. Now let's set up the lighting. So press 1 on the number pad to switch to front view. Then press 5 on the number pad to switch from perspective to orthographic view. Now zoom out until you can see the lamp then right click on it to select it. Then press G and drag it to the bottom center of this text. Press the left mouse button when it's in place. Now zoom in. Next, press 3 on the number pad to switch to right side view. Now press G and drag the lamp below and in front of the text. If you look at the grid lines in the background, you'll notice that I've located the lamp two large grid divisions below the top text, and two large grid divisions to the left. Next, click on the Object Data button if it's not already selected. Make sure the point lamp is selected and set the size to 1. 
Now click on the Use Nodes button and set the Strength value to 5000. Now let's see what the lighting looks like. So press 0 on the number pad to switch to camera view. Then click on this menu and select Rendered. Next, let's set the background color. So click on the World button. Then click on the color and set the color to black. Now right click on this text to select it. Then click on the Material button. You might want to experiment with the roughness value which will give your text a different look. I like the way that it looks when it's set to 0.3. Now let's add some glare to the text. So from the Screen Layout menu, select Compositing. Make sure that the Compositing button is selected, and then add a check mark next to Use Nodes. I'll expand this area to give us more room to work. I can also close this Properties panel by pressing N. This is the Render Layers node, and it's currently outputting our render layer. The Composite node is used for our final output. In order to see what we're doing better, let's add a Viewer node. So press Shift A and select Output, and then Viewer. Then add a check mark next to Backdrop. Now whatever we connect to the Viewer node's image input will be displayed in this background area. So let's connect the Render Layer's image output to the Viewer image input. Now click the Render button to render the image, and the Viewer will display it in the background. If you want to zoom out on the background, then press V. You can zoom in by pressing Alt-V. Next, let's add a glare filter. So press Shift-A and select Filter, and then Glare. Then move it over the connection between the Render Layers node and the Viewer, and press the left mouse button to drop it into place. Then add a connection between the Glare image output and the Composite image input. Next, make sure that this value is set to Streaks. You can change the threshold value to control how much glare is present. I'm going to set it to 1. You can also control the angle of the streaks by changing the angle offset value. We're going to animate this value so that the streaks will rotate during the animation. So let's bring up the timeline. So click this menu and select Timeline. Now click on the left edge of the Timeline window and drag it to the left to expand the window. Now set the frame number to 1. Then set the angle offset to 1. Now right click on the angle offset value and select Insert Keyframe. The background color for this value will turn yellow to indicate that a keyframe has been set. Now set the frame number to 160. Then set the angle offset to 160. Now right click on the angle offset value and select Insert Keyframe. Now the angle offset value will be set to 1 at the start of the animation and it will end up at 160 at the end of the animation. The next thing that we're going to do is to add the streaking effect of the text that's visible while the text is moving. We'll do this by adding Motion Blur. So from the Screen Layout menu, select Default. Then click on the Render button. Now come down to the Motion Blur section. Put a check mark next to Motion Blur and expand the section. Set the shutter value to 10. This will give us a long motion blur. Now let's do a quick animation render to see how this looks. So come up to the output section. This is where you set the directory where your animation will be saved. On my computer, the contents of this default temp directory are deleted when Blender closes, so be sure and select a different directory. To do that, click on this button and select a directory. Next, click here to set the file format. There are multiple movie formats that you can choose from. I'm going to use OGG Theora. Next, I'll save what I've done so far. Now click the Animation button. This will take a few minutes to render, and so I'm going to pause the video until it's done. The video is done rendering. To view the animation, go to the Render menu and click on Play Rendered Animation.
The animation will play through to the end and then start back at the beginning again. Everything looks good, so let's set things up to render a higher quality animation. So open the sampling section. This is where you can set the number of render samples. The larger this number is, the better the quality will be, but the longer it will take to render. I'm going to set the number of render samples to 500. With this value, I'm expecting my computer to take about two hours to render the animation. Now click here to set the file format. You basically have two options. You can choose a movie format or an image format. If you choose a movie format, then you will end up with a single movie file. If you choose an image format, then the animation will be rendered as a series of individual images. In our case, the animation is 160 frames, so we would end up with 160 images. Then after rendering the individual images, Blender's Video Sequence Editor can be used to combine the images into a single movie file. If you choose a movie file type and the rendering process is interrupted before it's finished, then you will need to restart the rendering process again from the beginning. If you choose an image file type and the rendering process is interrupted, then you can start again from where the process was interrupted. So when I render an animation that's going to take a long time, I like to render it to individual images. So I'm going to select the PNG image format. Now click here to set the directory that will hold the rendered images. I have an empty directory named result that I'm going to use. As I mentioned earlier, on my computer, the contents of the default temp directory are deleted when Blender closes, so be sure and select a different directory. Next, save your project before rendering the animation. Now we're ready to render the animation, so click the Animation button. If you want to abort the rendering before it's finished, then press the Escape key. If the rendering is interrupted before it's finished, then you can restart it from where you left off by entering a new value for the start frame. So for example, if only the first 75 frames were rendered, then set the start frame to 76. Then click the Animation button again to continue. Well now I'm going to pause the video until it's done rendering. The animation is done rendering now, and this is the final frame. To view the animation, go to the Render menu and click on Play Rendered Animation. Now if you open up Windows Explorer or something equivalent and navigate to the directory where the images were saved, you can see the individual images that make up the animation. Now let's compile these images into a single movie file. So start by clicking here and select Video Sequence Editor. Then click on the Add menu and select Image. Then navigate to the directory where you save the image files. Then press the A key to select all of the images and click on the Add Image Strip button. Now press N to open the Properties panel. We want the animation to start at frame 1 so change the start frame value to 1. This purple bar represents the images. Now go to the output section and click here to set a movie file format. I'm going to use OGG Theora. Now come down to the post processing section. Make sure that there is a check mark next to sequencer. Now press the animation button. This will be fast because we're not rendering the animation again. Instead, the images are being compiled into a single movie file. Now if you look at the directory where the movie was saved, you should be able to find your movie file. Now assuming that you have a video player that will play the movie format that you specified, you can now play your new movie. I've set up this player to repeat the video in a loop so that it will keep playing. If you want to make changes to your project, and then render the animation again as individual images, then remove the check mark next to Sequencer. Then change the file type and click the animation button. Well, that concludes this video. Thanks for watching, and please subscribe and leave a comment.